the hell's going on here? May God have mercy on us all. Welcome to the Alan Handelman Show. A variety of fascinating people from the international world of rock and roll to the conversational newsmakers and authors. From the great television and motion picture talents to the country's funniest comedians. And best of all, you can call Alan and his guests toll-free at 1-800-ROCK-TALK. You never really know what's going to be happening, but we guarantee you a show people will be talking about tomorrow. Now with tonight's show, here's Alan. He's back. The Motor City Madman, Ted Nugent, back at the Alan Handelman Show. All new interview, concentrating on the music. More music than usual on the show because it's a special weekend. That's a good reason right there. And, of course, he is going to talk about some of those controversial comments he's made. But we're going to start off with my favorite comedian, Louis Black, America's foremost commentator on everything or America's foremost commentator on stupidity. He's right in the middle of his uh, tour running on empty. Before we get into it, let's uh, play a recent clip from The Daily Show. I've got bad news. If you're eating right now, chances are you're not eating what you think you're eating. Unless you're having a hot dog, then you know you're eating pig snouts and anuses. For instance, have you ever eaten Kobe beef? No, you haven't. You just paid for Kobe beef. In fact, you can't even buy Kobe beef in this country because it's only made in Japan and it's illegal to import it. So if your local bistro is serving Kobe sliders, just go across the street to White Castle because it's the same thing! These people are pissing on our legs and telling us it's champagne. <laughs> and it's not just meat. A report by advocacy group Oceana tested seafood around Los Angeles and found consumers buying one fish but getting another. The worst were sushi restaurants, 87% fraud rate, John. 100% uh, of the snapper that was tested was wrong. <laughs> snapper, tilapia, who gives a that's what the ketchup's for. <laughs> Look, lie all you want about your fake beef or your mystery fish, but this, this is inexcusable. Duncan's new artisan bagels are as authentic as it gets. Really? Authentic bagels? Because unless you change your name from Duncan Donutowitz at Ellis Island, then I doubt it. Louis Clark, everybody. We'll be right back. Part of one of his uh, recent rants from The Daily Show, Louis Black making his eighth appearance on The Alan Handelman Show. Great to have you back, man. Well, nice to be back, Alan. <laughs> Tell you what, a lot of things happening. You got the uh, Running on Empty tour. That is, that's the name for the latest tour? Yes. And, of course, the uh, special that's out in God We Rust. Talk about that briefly. Then we'll get into a whole bunch of stuff. Um, it's on a thing called Epics HD. I'm not sure. I think you still may be able to go to Epics and get a two-week um, uh, trial on the computer if you don't get Epics, and then uh, eventually it'll roll on to Comedy Central. And uh, um, and it was a, it was a tour that I really finished in May, and then began uh, working on the next tour. Wow. So this a lot a lot of the tour is new material stuff that you've written over the uh, months since I've okay. seen you. A lot of it is seem to have to do anything anymore they seem to just do it i know just that since the last time we spoke what are some of the uh uh observations you made just the, uh, the absurdities of life that have made it into your act some recent stuff instagram which has produced absolutely no money at all has been purchased for a billion dollars by facebook who which doesn't really produce stuff is, is expects to be to do a, a public offering where they'll sell stock and we'll make a hundred billion dollars. So we have companies that don't really produce anything making, a t you know, it's just, I, it's just, I feel like we're on the edge of, you know, we, we have to seem to have to, <laughs> we, need a, we need bubbles. And yeah. this is, we seem to be going back to the tech bubble. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Facebook is worth a hundred billion dollars, but uh, I'm hard pressed to see it. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have people uh, out of work and you see one ads that says the unemployed uh, do, do not apply, not for you, or implying in so many words, don't bother. Yeah, well, if 
you've been been unemployed for over a year, don't don't apply for it's just extraordinary. Yeah, and the, and the, uh, and then today I, I was just because I was looking, I I got I, I stumbled on something, and it so you, you've got a, a Facebook stock that a hundred billion dollar, you know, that is going to sell for a hundred billion dollars and was worth God knows what a share, and General Electric, which actually makes stuff, is twenty dollars a share. Yeah. So, I don't, and I, and I did the same thing when back way back when when the first tech bubble. You know, it was like General Motors, which which was you know not doing great, but still was making things and had property. Yeah. Um, was was worth less than Amazon, which had uh, which did not, you know was now a, a mega thing. But it's you know there were all sorts of companies that weren't. You know, any it's like it's like this weird kind of gambling. There's a whole bunch of well-off people who are gambling, and the rest of the people are, you know, scrambling to get to the table. Talk a little bit about politics. It's something that I observe with my conservative friends over the years. If I would say certain words, uh, just certain phrases, they would see red. It was kind of like Pavlov's dog. Uh, they, they just certain things. Media matters. I noticed was something with. The hard right, you just mention it, and they get angry. Uh, Clinton was a word, a, a person. Liberal, fairness doctrine. I have a little list here I want to share with you, then I want to get your thoughts. Uh, Democrats, of course. Anything with the word hate, hate radio. Uh, community organizer, compromise. And now I think moderates, because most of us are moderates. I think they're going to make that a dirty word. Your reaction? I mean, you know, they've run out of things. Social, they brought back socialism, which doesn't even exist. That's I mean, right. They that's really, right. Yeah. You know, to call this government socialist or any, you know, you know, it's absurd. You know, especially, you know, you can't have social. There's, there's no such thing in, in terms of socialism where you know the, the businesses are allowed to put in all the money they possibly can into an election. It just doesn't work that way. It's not the way it is. And and if you know, you know, and, and if. It, it, it's just there's seven socialists left in the country. I mean, it's like it's absurd. <laughs> I know. And if you really want to see, and the, and, and the leadership is dead. I, it's you know, you know the, uh, and then they were the media. They now, you know, they worry about the liberal media. You know, the Fox is they want, you know, there's a place for them to go. I mean, if that's if that you want somebody to tell you what it is that you think, there's a place for you to go. I don't, I don't read the New York Times. That, you know, most you know, it's it's this whole concept of the fact that there's a lack of thought that you read the New York Times because it kind of uh, reassures you about your position. Well, you know, that ended during the Iraq War mm -hmm. when, when the New York Times basically beat the drum to go there. So mm -hmm. I mean, stop it already. Mm -hmm. You know, I read the New York Times to try to, to find bits and pieces of information because they and, and facts because they they still at least hire people who uh, have resumes. <laughs> that's that's true. We're talking to uh, Lewis Black, who's coming to town. The tour goes through, I believe, through May and maybe even more. You can go to his website, lewisblack.com and get all the information. Have you had any recent customer service hassles in your life? Nothing except for uh, the, the general thing I have when I try to get um, uh, the uh, I have an insurance company that's supposed to vaguely help. I mean, there's I have two thousand dollars in dental insurance a year from my union uh, package of, um, and that's another word they don't like, union. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, that's a you good know, one. Right. That's a horrifying. You know that 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 you know that uh, those of us in the in the Screen Actors Guild or and now with AFTRA would be considered this horrific thing, you know, because we should be doing it for free. And uh, the uh, the um, so I get this uh, I get this two thousand dental insurance. They never pay for. There's nothing apparently that's covered under this. I know nothing. I know I know it's unbelievable. I have the same thing. I said you know only cover sixty percent of this or fifty. Mm. Yeah. Hey, listen, the other thing I wanted to ask you, uh, because you uh, are spending a lot of time in North Carolina and being Jewish, and you always hear the typical, oh, people say, hey, how could how could you be Jewish and live in, in, in the South? And my, I always found that an interesting question because never had a problem in North Carolina myself being Jewish. I don't think you did either. No, it was weird. It was a, uh, it, it was a time... When I went to Chapel Hill, that there was the fraternity next door, thought that uh, 
the my fraternity was all Jewish, and it was like uh, a non-sectarian fraternity, and um, there were Catholics, Protestants, Jews, the whole thing, and so they they would yell stuff at us, but. Uh, that was about it. And then there were people who, really, I mean, I, I ran into people who'd never met Jews, but it wasn't like, uh, oh, we're going to go out. And the Jews right, right. Did that. I or mean, I or they're fascinated. They're fascinated with you in a very positive way. Yeah, no, it was, it was, uh, it was, you know, it was more about being unique. Than right, being, right. Being, being other. And uh, the, um, and even, you know, if you go down, I mean, it's absurd that you, I, mean, I, I, I tour Savannah and uh, Charleston and um, all of those places had uh, large, large <laughs> Jewish settlements, you know, as I say, because they needed somebody who could add, mm-hmm. but, um, but they are, and they were all, uh, you know, parts of the community. It's, you know, I had a close friend I was born and raised with, his parents were, uh, you know, we're from Alabama, had no, you know, there was no problem. You know, it's, Absolutely it's, it's kind right. of, it's that myth that they've got that kind of, uh, you know, which is, you know, which is, you know, look, up until probably about 65, you might hold to that myth, but things started to change rapidly, much as if it's going to, it's going to change rapidly in terms of um, uh, gays and uh you know, and uh, intermarriage and the whole thing. I mean, interracial marriages because the kids don't care anymore. It's it's like they don't care, and it's already beginning to change. I mean, more than beginning to change, it's already being incorporated. Stay tuned for more of The Alan Handelman Show. I got some great news for the Sea Crane Company, new sponsor here on the Alan Handelman Show. Let me tell you something about this uh, company. They they offer a wide range of electronics, specializing in radio and audio and MP3 recorders, clever gadgets, radios that are designed to really pull in the stations, even AM. Uh, there's a lot of things I'm going to be telling you about in the days ahead about this great company, but one product... This is this is one of the the best inventions. It's the Super USB Wi-Fi Antenna Three. It's a thing about what eight inches long. It looks cool. It has these suction cups on it. You stick it on a window. You can even put it outside. It's waterproof, and it pulls in weak Wi-Fi signals. If you're having trouble getting the Wi-Fi signal, getting enough bars, this amplifies it, and it's amazing. In fact, it has two USB plugs, and it's interesting. You could just use one. But if you want even more of a boost, just plug in both of them. So if you're at a hotel and you're trying to get a hot spot, they don't have good internet service, let's say, where you are, you can find a Starbucks down the road a mile and suck it in. It works. See for yourself. Go to the website, ccradio.com. And by the way, go, even if you're not interested in buying this particular product, you've got to see the catalog. Get a free catalog. It's absolutely free. You go to ccradio.com. And just say, hey, I want that free catalog of all those cool gadgets. And just use my name as a code, Alan, and you're going to get special deals. And we'll tell you more about it. Here's their toll-free number, 800-522-8863. 800-522-8863. That's 800-522-8863. Ask about the Super USB Wi-Fi Antenna 3. And don't forget that free catalog. And now, here's something from Coors Light for everybody out there who loves summer. I love working on my tan. That girl from the taco stand. Lots of long weekends and twins. Yeah, have yourself a long, hot summer and an ice-cold Coors Light. Coors Light. Cold. Down. Easy. Rock on. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Hi, this is Lewis Black. You're listening to Alan Handelman, and you better know that you're listening to Alan Handelman. You're not like listening to something else, because if you think you're listening to something else, you're not. You're listening to Alan Handelman. Lewis Black continues on the phone this time, and then later, the Motor City Madman, Ted Nugent, is back with a good dose of rock and roll and the story behind the story. And yes, he's going to concentrate a little bit on some of the crazy things 
uh, that's been in the news about him. Give him a chance to get his side of the story. Hey, this is interesting. For those of us who live in North Carolina, it's great when there are some positive things to point to as far as what makes national news. And lately, uh, there's some embarrassing things to talk about. Here he talks about getting that creative, I guess that edge, something about being in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. He even talked about this in his book. I can think of no better place to write a book about religion than this, my ancestral homeland, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where I attended the University of North Carolina as an undergraduate. None of my ancestors actually came from here. They all came from Russia and later settled in New York. But I like to imagine that they're from the place. It's less depressing. I was much happier in North Carolina. I felt absolutely at home in Chapel Hill from the moment I arrived from the suburbs of Washington, D.C. 40 years ago. At the time, it seemed strange that a Jew from up north would feel comfortable in the South. But Chapel Hill was a place where there were only a few folks left who thought the South had won the Civil War. It's one of the few spots on earth where I have felt comfortable in my own skin. I don't feel that way in many places. Hence, the very attractive series of twitches one sees in my stage act. Maybe it's because I lived in Chapel Hill in a past life. It is the first place I discovered my own voice and was able to take my first baby steps toward becoming a writer. So, to tackle a subject as complicated as religion, which I have no expertise in, I figured I would return to the place where I first found the words to express my point of view. And then, of course, there is the inspiration provided by the vision of all the young co-eds of my alma mater, who fill the sidewalks with their loveliness. Comedian Lewis Black from one of his recent books. One of the great funny stories from that book, and, and when you talk about Chapel Hill, and maybe one of the reasons you don't smoke pot anymore was an experience you had in Chapel Hill. Talk about that. A friend of ours who's in Vietnam sent a joint home, and we smoked one. This is why I will always be, I don't know how the guys even handled it over there, but we smoked one joint among nine people, and literally at one point during this thing, and it was the most, it was the most powerful stuff I've ever smoked. And uh, we were listening to Bob Dylan. The song went off. And it literally ended up, uh, we had a long discussion. It seemed to go on for, you know, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. Somebody said that the album is over. And uh, we got up to go uh, to, to uh, turn the album over, and, it was, uh, and then the next song started. Mm, that's, that's good stuff. I actually wrote a play based on that. Occurrence. Do you? Because, you know, in other words, you were just so wrapped up in conversation, Back, especially being in college, being around creative people who really believe you can make a difference. You really believe you could change the world. Even if you can't, you, you got that belief. So you, you yeah. talk about what you're going to do and, hey, let's do this. What about that? And yeah. it's, a, it's a wonderful time in your life. It is. I think uh, I'm always screaming at kids in college to, you know, you know, this is the time you, you you've got to enjoy this because uh, once you close, once you get out of there, it just goes downhill. Absolutely. There's no, uh, you know, people in school. The the uh, anybody in college is lucky to be there, and it's uh, and really it's a time in which you pursue whatever it is that you really want to do, and don't let anybody uh, stop you from doing that. That's the one thing I believe the most. You're right. Uh, if you if you hang in with what it is you want to do, you'll end up in the right place. That's right. And then don't give up the dream. Yeah. That's uh, another great point that you make in your book. Did you ever party at East Carolina University when you I were... Never, that, that when I was there. Later on, I did. Oh, we'll see. I was probably there when, uh, yeah, probably, when you came... I, probably, and I said, uh, but I always said, you know, why would you go to Greenville? We were professionals. <laughs> That's right. And you had Greensboro with the, where all the girls were, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, I was... Uh, you know, it was seven men to every girl, every uh, girl at Chapel Hill when I was there. Well, so that's you, you had, and there were six thousand captive women at Greensboro, so you had to go there. Yeah, I know what you mean. I think uh, ECU at that time had uh, that kind of ratio. But you know what's interesting? With all the success that you've had, Lewis Black, you still have a house in North Carolina. But it's straight out of an apartment. <laughs> if I had a house, then I would actually have to do yard work and stuff, <laughs> and that's exhaust. I can't. I'm not there. The place would just be overrun. Yeah, well, what time of the year do you get to spend more time in the state? I get, I, I, sometimes it depends on my touring schedule, but usually uh, the spring and the summer is real, when I've been down there and spent most of the time. I do a uh, 
I do a, it in the it, it, depending. I do a, a comedy festival depending on when the kids want to do it. At, uh, at the university, we do a comedy festival each year, which has been this will be the tenth year next year. So it's kind of exciting. Uh, the last question here kind of gets some insight. This is a TV show that I think you're old enough to remember. It's a television show called Amos and Andy that I I don't really I was too young to really remember when it was on TV other than just images, but recently got a copy of the show, I mean the whole show, the whole series, and I'm telling you, it really was funny and it wasn't racist. That was the impression I got. Did you ever get to see it in recent years? I, yeah, it's actually. Excuse me, to get a copy is almost impossible. Oh, I'll tell you what. Can I give you a gift from me? I have uh, the uh, entire I, series. I have it. I actually, oh. someone gave it to me. And uh, as a kid, I never looked at it as racist. Um, as a kid, I, it never came across to me as being that way at all. And, uh, and it, you know, because it's, you know, you know what it is. It's, you know, you could put anybody, you could put any group doing you know it's it's it all goes back it's to the 15th century i mean i studied theater so i mean it all goes back to mm -hmm. stock characters doing stock things mm -hmm. that's all it is and it happened to be uh you know black characters it's it's a, a pity in some ways i mean in a sense uh if you look at um the uh, the Bilko show, which was another brilliant show, right. uh, in, in the, at the same time frame, it's uh, it was stupid ones, smart white guys, and stupid white guys, right. and conniving white. You know, Bilko was like Kingfish; he was a conniver. I mean, it's it's just too bad. I mean, eventually, I think people get over it, but uh, I think it carries a connotation that had nothing to do with the show. And one of the reasons I think it's important to bring up is that the show had a lot of problems because of the NAACP and other groups that said it was racist. They yanked it off the air. CBS vowed they would never release it again. They're sorry. And it can, you can't, it's essentially the only TV show that's been banned. Yeah. And the, uh, and part of it may have had to do too with the, the whole fact that initially it was white guys doing. Yeah. And radio, and right. Radio. Right. And then if you look back, I mean, I, you know, I'm sorry. You look back at uh, this is how old I am. If you look back at uh, there's a show with uh, Molly Goldberg of all people. This is really dating myself, and uh, <laughs> which was a Jewish show. The Goldbergs. The Goldbergs, which for all intents and purposes, you could put in the same category. As, right. You know, in terms of uh, you know, uh, it, and it wasn't as funny. <laughs> right. Right. But it was Jewish stereotypes. I mean, it's like. Uh, you know, eventually we get over it, eventually we realize it, and hopefully we move on. Yeah. Lewis, you're great. I wish we had more time. I uh, can't wait to see you. And again, congratulations. A great special, great reviews, and running on empty, man. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We'll see you. We'll see you on Friday, Alan. This is the Alan Handelman Show. Compelling talk radio. And now, here's something from Coors Light for everybody out there who loves summer. Love working on my tan. That girl from the taco stand. Lots of long weekends and twins. Yeah, have yourself a long hot summer and an ice cold Coors Light. Coors Light. Cold, down, easy. Rock on. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado.